hope you're ready for something new and exciting from the folks at Steinberg. We're going to check out the latest, greatest addition to the Hallian family of instruments, B-Box. To start, click on the former drop-down menu for selecting specific libraries. In the new instrument selector window, choose B-Box. You'll see that the drums and percussion category filter is conveniently already soft selected for us to filter out unwanted instrument programs. Double click on a sound to load it into the program rack. Just like with any drum beat program in Hallian Sonic, you can trigger the loop by pressing one of the green keys on the keyboard. You'll notice that whichever key you press, the loop pattern remains the same. If you want to switch the pattern, there are three different ways to do this. The first way you can change a pattern is by pressing one of the blue keys. The second is by hitting one of the trigger pads. You'll notice the trigger pads light up at the same time you press one of the blue keys because the trigger pads are essentially duplicate assignments of the different patterns. The white keys represent individual hits of the sounds within the beat. While this sound is pretty cool, I'm going to switch to another program before hopping into the beatbox interface. I'm going to choose Dubstep Groove 5 because it has some pretty neat pitch toms. Beatbox comes with over 200 ready-to-go drum kit presets made up of more than 900 samples of the highest quality. When the program is finished loading, click on the edit menu. Now you can see the proper Beatbox interface. Let's hit play and get started with this incredible instrument. Those of you familiar with classic drum machines will appreciate the standard 16-step pattern sequencer. The red lights essentially represent 16th notes in a one-bar pattern. The instrument list shows you the drum for each pattern lane. You can addition the individual drums by clicking on the trigger button for each sound. If you hover over the sound number, you can easily switch samples with your mouse wheel or magic mouse. To add drum hits to a sound, just light up the individual blocks by clicking on the steps in the corresponding lane. When an individual sound is selected in red, you can tweak the sound with the knobs on either side of the matrix. So if let's say I wanted to pan these various toms, I can select a tom and adjust the panner for just that one tom. There is an easier way to do this, which I'll show you in a minute. Likewise, I can adjust the coarse and fine pitch of the individual drum sounds. When you're pitching things down, you might want to adjust the decay as the sample takes more time to play through. If you want to return the pitch knobs to their original value, just hold down the controller command key and click on the knobs to restore them. As I mentioned before, there's a third way to change the drum patterns, and this is the best screen to do it in, because you can see the pattern change in the matrix below. Now let's check out the mixer. By clicking on the Mix tab, we can clearly see Level, Pan, Sends, and Output Routing. This is a much better page to edit panning because you don't have to select the sounds each time you want to pan it. For those of you who would rather mix outside of Beatbox, you can assign an individual output to Cubase's mixer, provided you have multiple outputs set up in Cubase. The filter and distortion controls on the right apply only to the instrument sound you have selected. You have a standard cutoff and resonance control, as well as a choice of distortions. The tube distortion is the safest and smoothest of the distortions, but you might want to try some of the sample reduction distortions. Let's stick with the tube for now and check out the auxiliary section. Here you have the ability to disable the delay and reverb. The reverb and delay each have their individual volume level as well as an overall effects volume. The delay has many more parameters, including, but not limited to, your choice of three different delay types and the ability to sync the delay to your tempo. There's also balance, feedback, and filter controls for the delay. On the left side of the aux screen, you have some controls which modify the groove and playback settings for your beat. If I press a key with the loop switch on, the beat will play continuously until I release a key. If I turn the loop switch off, the pattern will only play for one cycle. If we set the hold to on, I can just tap the key without holding it down to trigger a pattern cycle. With loop and hold on, one tap of a key triggers endless pattern play. By setting the hold to gate, the pattern plays continuously, but only sounds when I have a key held down. This makes a bit more sense in the pattern window. You can see that the pattern is still playing through time, but only shows up audibly when I hit a key. Sort of like a needle dropping on a record while the vinyl is still spinning. 
Once you have a pattern you like, you can save it down here by clicking on the disk icon and recall the patterns in the drop-down menu. You can also trash patterns that you don't want to keep. You can also change the length of a pattern before you start or after you've finished, just in case you only like the beginning of a pattern. Bbox is also great at sharing with others. If you have a pattern you like, you can drag and drop it to your desktop or drag and drop it right into Cubase and a MIDI file is automatically generated.